Hey there, everybody. Um, I wanted to do a little expansion on a thought I had in a recent video, which is something that came from Camelia Elias's book on the Marseille Tarot, and also in reading her blog. And it's the idea of looking for and finding evidence in the reading for what we're saying, um, or at least the way that I have interpreted that. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that and what that looks like and, and why I feel important. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the idea of, uh, or the, the danger and the tendency to compare ourselves to one another um, in terms of style or ability and whatnot. Um, because this was something else that was on my mind. Um, and it's been on my mind for various reasons. But one of the things that made me think about it is, in fact, um, Camille Elias's writing and her book uh, and her blog, which I've been kind of loving. Um, and the so the first thought is really about how um, how much I enjoy her style and how um, kind of in love with the the precision that she talks about and the like sharp take no take no prisoners approach um, that she has and how kind of envious I am you know, of that ability. And there are flashes of moments where whenever I'm watching videos or reading blogs or books, when I feel like, oh, you know, if only I were more like that. You know, if only I read more in that way. And, oh, that that's, that's the right way to do it. Um, and I start to get... Um, I don't want to say down on myself. I do. I start to get kind of um, unnerved, and um, I I can get to a place where I denigrate my own style, um, especially when I am under the influence, so to speak, of really kind of confident uh, speakers or thinkers or writers um, who who very authoritatively, you know, put their, put their thoughts into the world. And it's, it's that confidence that makes it hard to, you know, to disagree. You're like, oh yeah, you know, anyone who's that confident about something may, has to be, has to be telling the truth. You know what I mean? Like nobody, nobody who's uncertain, nobody who's making it up can be that confident. Um, and, and, so this is, you know, this is, as always, a little digression from what my original point was, but it was on my mind. Um, it's That's a dangerous place to go. Um, and I, I, I come at that from, like, a writing world. I've talked about my writing a little bit. Um, but one of the deadliest things you can do as a creative person is compare yourself negatively um, and even often positively to other makers. Um, and the reason that I say that is because, I'm just going to move this a little bit, um, is because uh, we all bring something to the party, you know what I mean? We all bring something to the table. Sorry about that shaking. And it's important for us as readers, uh, or any any kind of creative thinker, um, creative doer who who has an art that they partake in, it's important for us to occasionally remind ourselves what we bring to the party. Um, and, I, you know, I have kind of a sloppy metaphor for this, but um, the it's, it's easy. So, you know, if <laughs> so here's my sloppy metaphor, right? I was trying to make it less sloppy. Um, if I go to a party and I go to the grocery store, and before I go into the grocery store, I blindfold myself. Um, and I just randomly spin around, grab something off the first shelf I come into contact with, pay for it, and ask the clerk at the counter, the cashier, to double bag it before I can see it. And then I bring it to the party. It's hard for me to arrive at the party and say, oh, hey, I, I brought this for everyone, you know, because I don't know what I brought. Um, so chances are that people will partake of other things that are easier to see um, unless 
unless they actually look, you know, unless they care enough to look. Um, whereas if I go to the grocery store and I pick something consciously, let's say it's pickles, you know, pickles are a weird thing to bring to a party, but I decide to bring pickles because no one else is going to bring pickles. Or maybe I don't even pick pickles because no one else will bring them. I just like pickles. Well, I may show up to the party and everyone may say, oh, that's weird. But what I can do then is I can say, well, here, here are reasons why pickles are great for a party. You know, they're unlike anything else anyone brought. They go good with other things. Um, they're sweet and salty and all these delicious things that we love. They're crunchy and um, they're different from everything else. So I brought pickles, and here are all the reasons why you would enjoy the pickles. That is better, right, than going and not knowing what we've brought. It's also better than saying, well, yeah, I brought pickles, it's stupid, like it's not as good as the guacamole that Janice brought, you know, but all, you know, all I had to offer was pickles. No, what we have to offer is pickles, and they're crunchy and salty and sweet, and they go great on burgers, um, and they're different, and they're sharp, and they are something unexpected. So he, that's my clumsy metaphor for the danger of denigrating our own work, not knowing what we bring to the table, and comparing our work to others. Um, so in there is a little kernel, I think, of hopefully something true. Which is um, to remind ourselves that we should and can learn from one another. But we should and try to be one another. Um, and be so envious of another person's style or skill that um, we forget how great our pickles are, you know. Um, I really, really admire Camellia Ellis's style. Um, on the other side of the coin, I would be afraid of having a reading with her, um, because I may hear an answer or an answer phrased in a way that, um, isn't going to help me. And one thing I've learned about life is that people often don't take advice and that, um, when people aren't ready to hear a message in a certain way, hearing it in a really blunt way can shut them down and actually make it less likely to hear it and to work with it. So what I bring to the table is that life experience and that knowledge. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not blunt in my readings. Um, I'm not terse. I'm not fast <laughs> as anyone who's ever watched any of my videos will tell you. Um, what I do understand um, is that people are unlikely to take advice um, and, you know, 15 plus years of corporate coaching. And so my questions are not terse and blunt and sharp. Mine meander a little bit more and they ask more questions. Sometimes they ask more questions than they answer. Um, and in recent years, I have, in fact, ended my readings by asking a series of open-ended questions that may help the person I'm reading for come up with an action plan. So those are my pickles, you know what I mean? And it's not to say that my pickles are better than Camellia Elias's um, corn chips or whatever. She, her, she's more elegant than corn chips, but I'm just reaching for things you'd bring to a party. They're just different and they will attract different people for different reasons at different times, and that's a good thing. So this is all by way of saying that it's important to avoid the temptation to compare ourselves too negatively with others and to denigrate our pickles. <laughs> Don't denigrate your pickles. That's my big lesson. Um, your pickles or whatever, whether it's cheesecake or pretzels or kimchi or whether you're the person who shows up at the party with a first aid kit, you know, that first aid kit may not feed anybody, but it could come in handy um, when the other person's tequila is gone. Do you know, like, we all bring something to the party, and spending time considering what it is we bring um, 
makes it easier for us to sell it if that's something we're interested in doing. And it just makes us feel better and it makes us understand how we fit in to the overall, um, the overall, you know, the party, you know, like who wants to go to a party where everyone's the same and talking about the same thing. So pardon that ramble, but it is an important message. It's something that's been on my mind a lot. Um, and I don't mean to pick on Camille Elias in particular. Uh, she's just been on my mind because I've really been immersed in her world and trying to kind of absorb as much of her um, clarity and precision as I can because that's been a goal for me this year. Um, and so in, in her style, I found something that I aspire to. But I can't unknow everything I know about life. You know, and that's another thing. Um, I can't, I, I have, we have, you know, I'm a man, an American man, a gay male living in the United States in the Northeast who has X, Y, and Z life experiences. She's a woman living in Europe who has a career in academia behind her, grew up clearly with some sort of magical background. You know what I mean? So our, our own experiences bring us to different places and that's a good thing is my point. But I do want to riff on something that I admire about what she says, which is to find evidence in the reading for what you're saying. Um, so I just want to explore that idea with you now. Um, and I'm just going to do like a classic question that one might get um, from someone who wants a reading, um, you know, which is uh, something like, you know, I've been in this relationship for a couple months. Is it going anywhere? Um, and what I'm going to do is just a nine card, um, sort of a standard nine card. Uh, I guess I could do three, but I think when we're looking for evidence, kind of a mid-sized spread is a good thing. Um, pardon the noise outside, if you can hear that. It's so beautiful out, and I have the windows open. There's about, like, a 30-minute period in New England between winter and summer where it's, like, perfect, and I'm not shivering, and I'm not sweating my ass off. I hate summer. I'm just going to say that I'm not a fan of summer. Um, I don't like the heat. All right, so we're, let's just do a, like a, I'm shuffling a lot and rambling a lot, as I do. There's another thing, you know, that's what I bring to the party. If you want terse, quick videos, I'm not the guy for you. Um, so I'm going to just do nine cards, and I'm actually going to draw it sort of um, like I would in a Lenormand reading if I were doing a Lenormand reading. Um and I'm actually going to read it, not unlike a Lenormand reading. I am, once again, using a Marseille deck. Um, you can do this with anything. This is just where I'm at with my journey right now, and I'm really enjoying working with these cards. I'm enjoying working with this deck in particular, actually. This and my uh, Corte de Taroki are my besties. This is the deck I'm actually carrying around with me a lot um, because I don't want to damage the box this came in. Um, and I ordered another copy of this a month ago and it hasn't come in yet. And I'm really nervous it's gotten lost in the mail. So I just emailed um, Il Manigello actually because I ordered it directly from them hoping that they can track it somehow. Anyway, so we have someone who's asking um, is, you know, I've been in this relationship for a couple months. Is it going anywhere? Um, so the aim of this reading is, or the aim of this spread, can you see that? Yes, you can see it pretty good. Um, the aim of this spread is to, um, answer the question, one, and to support that answer with evidence from the, from the spread. Um, now I haven't practiced this in this way with this question, and I'm just going for it. So in my inimitable way, I will ramble as I do. I'm going to try to be as quick as I can, because this is already a longer video than I meant to. But at least now there's something to look at. Uh, I'm going to move this up a little bit. Boom. Refocus that bad boy. All right. Um, so is the relationship going anywhere? I'm going to start with the middle card and the first card here. Um... And, I, you know, I may not do all the Lenormandy things. I'm just going to go for it, so just bear with me. The main thing is answering the question and finding evidence. Um, so we start with the Empress and the Ace of Coins. Um, this partnership is interesting, right, because it starts by making me think uh, it's a very fertile area. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for growth here. 
um, certainly a lot of fertility. Uh, so the ground that this relationship is growing on is very fertile. That's a good thing. You know, the Empress, of course, represents in more traditional readings a very fecund, fecund, um, uh, rich soil, right? And the Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Earth, or the Ace of Coins here, gives us an excellent seed energy. Um, so in a sense, we've got this seed being planted in the earth, which is which is a good thing. Um, so that starts us off on a good path, right? Um, now I'm going to look um, at the rows um, and sort of see what they say and see if they can support my thesis, right? Now, because now I have a thesis, it looks like, yeah, the relationship is going somewhere, but it's really, really new. Um, and that's what I'm getting from these two cards. So in a way, the sense of newness, I definitely see in the first row. We've got one growing into two, so the seed is definitely expanding, um, and it's expanding into the Valet de Baston, the, uh, the um, page of wands. Um, and a page is young, a page is new, and a student. So definitely we have a very, we have evidence here of newness, but of potential. The one is growing into two, uh, and the two creates this passionate, enthusiastic young student um, who's looking off to the future, right? So newness, very, very good there. Um, that seems to support my overall thesis so far. Um, but it also, part two of the thesis is, yes, there's potential, but it's so new that um, it's hard to tell where it's going to go, right? Because it is so fresh. Um, a seedling is very delicate, uh, and a student can quickly be turned off from something they're passionate about if the wrong teacher comes, you know, into play. Um, speaking of teachers, interestingly, we have uh, the Hermit next to the Empress and then the Ace of Cups. So here's an interesting pairing. Um, the Hermit is not new at anything, um, but he is wise, and he's looking backward. So it feels like we've got um, this fertility, this this um, fecund energy based on being able to look at past experiences and what's been learned. Um, and the Empress is looking straight forward. So she's not, she's not afraid. Um, like her past experience has taught her a lot. Uh, and she's feeling new things, but she's looking, looking sort of boldly at the situation, you know? So if this is, if this is momentarily a significator, um, that's a good thing in terms of feeling brave and open, and certainly the seed of this new energy is good. So um, this this ace is resting on the hermit, so it's resting on experience. That's a good thing. The growth is on fertile ground, and the student is growing. Um, he's I, I use valets or pages as students. Um, I don't mean literally a student, but someone who's exploring something new. Um, is resting on sort of hopeful new feelings. So that's a good thing. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily support my thesis of newness, um, except for the fact that if I look num numerologically, we've got a three and a, two, a one. So again, we're all very early numbers here. Even the nine so far, the nine is the um, the the highest in the, the reading so far. So... Um, even in that case, we're still early days if we're looking at the trumps in that way. You know, we haven't reached 10. Um, so there is a newness. There's definitely experience um, and wisdom um, facing challenges boldly. You know, and I tend to look at the Empress in a Rider-Waite-Smith way, but if we look at it in more of a Marseille way, um, she is an active, authoritative woman. You know, so um, there's there's a receptivity to her certainly, um, but she's she's a little bit less the the passive empress of Pamela Coleman Smith in this case, and more a ruler um, who is brave and experienced, but still sort of hopeful and got a a good um, a good sort of sense of feeling nice things. Um, now, if I look at the bottom row, I'm going to try to find more support for my thesis that the potential's there, but it's very early days. Um, so here I find kind of some challenges to my thesis, right? Because I have the Ten of Wands, I have the Knight of Swords, and I have the Four of Swords. 
so four is early um in the suit but the 10 is is um obviously the completion of the suit of wands um so this is an interesting row uh because it has a very different message um what it actually suggests is a, sort of a foundation uh that isn't really about emotion at all um there's been a lot of work um done you know in life and there's like a real foundation in accomplishment and going in search of accomplishment uh sort of really going and actively hunting down accomplishment and and completing creative projects um so the tenor kind of changes here um and to a degree this comes out of a history of like really stable thinking so we have like a history i'm saying a history because i'm looking at this row kind of foundationally now which wasn't planned but it, it feels very foundational because of this 10 and the four being about um stability and um foundation too um in a way the foundation of sort of old ways of thinking um maybe sort of a conservative intellectual outlook is being shaken up by this idea of um passionate completion so if i look at the knight here going in search of if i look at him going in search of this then he's kind of breaking out of old habits to kind of bring a passionate completion so what i can say is that i can look at this in two ways um i can say that the the tendency of this person i'm reading for in the past has been really rigid um but their desire to bring a passionate something to completion um is changing the way they think um this could if we wanted to look at it this way represent the person's um love interest um and it may suggest that that love interest um is doing what i said breaking free of old ways of thinking but they may be more focused on completing their work right now you know, there's some sort of work project, something um, that is somewhat distracting um, and may not be the priority. Again, you know, it's it's easier when you know a little bit about if it's a real reading and you know a little bit about the person's situation. Um, in that case, it's a bit easier to read court cards. Um, I tend not to read the court cards as other people uh, unless something really strong calls to me. Um for example, the Valley de Baston at the top, I talked about being sort of um, an opportunistic, uh, youthful hope looking at something they're passionate about. Um, and if I follow my initial impulse, then that brings it to the Ten of Wands, where so there's this desire to sort of complete this path, um, and that means sort of breaking free of old ways of thinking. Um, so in this case, I'm going to just trust my normal path when I don't have more information to tell me otherwise and say that the court cards represent aspects of the person. Um, so, um, so this does not support my thesis. What it actually does is it interrupts my thesis to a degree. It does give me something that, um, you know, my quarant has to think about, uh, are there distractions? And in reality, that's not necessarily a bad thing because life should have distractions. We shouldn't only be focused on our relationships. Um, so nothing has really made me think, oh, we're in danger here. Um, but I am looking for evidence to support my overall thesis. So I'm going to now look at my columns and see if that sheds more light, more evidence on my thesis. Um, so if I look at column one, um, again, I've got the ace of coins, the hermit, and the ten of wands. Um, so I've got an interesting combination of, uh, like, inexperience practical inexperience and like spiritual experience and um the completion of work so uh the the coin suddenly takes on a more practical um aspect than it did when i was looking at it in this combination and in this row um because suddenly we're thinking about like m mentorship and work in some regards um 
But again, I'm looking for evidence about this question, and that doesn't speak to this question. So it's worth kind of re reconsidering my thought here. Um, incidentally, if you're still with me, um, this is a good thing to do as, as we're reading, because if we find that um, a combo is taking us too far from the question, the, the question should be our bounding box. And so it helps us not stray too far. Um, so this combination being about work or mentorship, that's not right for this question, even though that might, that's what my instinct is telling me. Um, this column, like this 10, anything that's going to be involved in this 10 of, 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 of wands is throwing a wrench in the overall flow. Uh, and that's something I should pay attention to. Um, this is really the first wrench in the flow that I experience. Um, but it made this row difficult to interpret, um, and it's making this column difficult to interpret. And I bet if I looked at a diagonal, it would make that hard too, but I'm not, probably not going to go that far. Um, so practical newness. So there's newness, uh, experience looking back, and completion. Um, so what this suggests, I guess, if I really tie it to the question, um, is that this energy needs to grow um, based on experience, needs experience, needs to develop into experience in order to bring itself to completion. Um, so that does provide evidence for my thesis. Um, this needs to grow and gain experience based on its past, so he was looking backwards, uh, in order to bring the, um, the relationship to uh, a higher next level. I keep using the word completion, but completion of a cycle. Uh, not the end of a relationship, but like the the end of cycle one of the relationship that takes it to the next part. Um, so if I force myself to deal with the relationship, what I'm having to reconcile is the wands not being about my normal pension for creative projects, but for passion points. Um, I'm going to have to look more at the idea of fire than my more Rider Waite Smithy thing of like these are about creative projects. Uh, a relationship can be a creative project, but in this case, I'm reading Wands as like fire, as passion, to sort of take that ignition, this ignition, this practical ignition, to a fiery, you know, this, in essence, we're using experience, the experiences of our past, to help this little spark become a bonfire. That does support my thesis, right? Because this needs to grow into this. So now we look at the middle column. Um, and we've got the Two of Coins, the Empress, and the Knight of Swords. So um, we do have two, we have a pairing coming together um, in a fertile environment that's intellectually stimulating um, and that's causing action, um, newish action. Um, so that, that, again, provides some evidence for me. Um, this is growing in this and it's causing this um and it's forcing us to go and look for different ways of thinking and not be a passive thinker but like an active doer um it may suggest too that it's forcing us to change the way we communicate um but again the two and the three here definitely support my idea and it's for supporting the idea of change um We've got now in our third column, the Valet de Baston, the Ace of Cups, and the Four of uh, Swords. So we've got a, sort of a passionate new impulse, feeling new seeds, um, resting on a foundation of sort of strong intellectual experience. So in essence, this kind of, this row sort of ties back to this row, if that makes any sense. Because the Four of Swords and the Hermit in this case are both making me think of, um, again, a, a foundation of knowledge that this person has built. Um, so this newness uh, is resting on experience. That's good. Um, fours can be conservative. Um, and ace of cups are not uh neither are pages by the way so um this could shake things up um this is sort of shaking up this foundation which of course kind of validates this 
Um, so in a way, this these this column here supports my theory that the old ways of doing things are being shaken up in order to kind of create a sense of completion. At this point, I feel kind of reasonably certain that my overall initial response is right. Um, if I wanted to check further, I could, I could go into that like cardamantic road of reading the diagonals. Um, I said I wasn't going to do it, but let's see if that further supports my thesis, right? Um, so we've got the valet and the empress, the page of wands, the empress, and the ten of wands. So this is an interesting combo because through the empress, we grow. Um, so, th so through this initial relationship of sort of curiosity and passionate enthusiasm growing in this fertile soil, we do ignite you know, this sort of youthful innocence does ignite to something like more of a bonfire. It grows. Um, so we do have a sense of growing. That does validate my, my thought. Um, uh, ace, empress, and four. Um, you know, we have a numero numerology because we go one, three, and four. Um, we have uh, the seed of life, sort of a life practical you know, energy, life sort of thing, again, growing um, on a bed of experience and um, coming down to this last row, this is another wrench. These two swords are, these two cards are kind of wrenches in a way, because this is saying, yes, it's based on experience, but also um, you can't be rigid and the fours can be rigid, um, which is why the fives come and break them up. Um, so this this row is interesting because everything in the reading as as far as I see it does validate my initial impulse which was that the the ground is fertile but it's very very new and it needs care and feeding in order to grow into something um but life does get in the way and there are old prejudices and intellectual developments and ways of communication that we have to kind of cut through in order to bring that to the next level. Um, so in that regard, I feel like I have worked through this en enough that I have evidence to support that. You know, I feel relatively confident in saying, um, yes, this, you know, the question was, is this going anywhere? Um, Yes, it is. Where is it going? It's hard to say right now because the energy is is so young and so fresh, but the ground is fertile enough that if we use our experience and we care for it, we can ignite it. We can take the match and ignite it into something bigger, uh expansive. I mean, if we look at the um if we look at the 10 of wands, um and this has been a journey for me as I kind of move in and out of of more pictorial or situational pips is that the Ten of Wands, while there's this tangle in the middle, is expanding outward. You know what I mean? So it has this strong woven core that's sort of growing out. Um, whereas like the Four of Swords is restricting, um, restricting something beautiful in essence. So um, we do need to break out of our cage in a way in order to grow some, and heat things up. Um, so where's it going? Well, it's going, it's going new. You know what I mean? It's it's too new to know yet. Um, but we have experiences, we have a foundation, uh, and we also have to remember that this can't be the only thing in our lives. So, um, in that regard, I feel like this has been this is helpful because it does support my overall thesis. Um, now, if I had had a hard time doing that, let's say. Um, I'm going to just randomly pick, not randomly, I'm going to specifically pick um, some, you know, different cards to, to throw in the, the works here, um, just to change the tone somewhat. specifically for a five. I'm gonna find one. I'll just use this one. 
Um, so, you know, just sort of keeping some of the cards the same and some different. Um, actually, I'm going to move this one. I'm going to move this one purely because if I change... Um, if I change these two cards, then my thesis changes. Um, right, so I need to keep these two the same in order to make this example work. But that would be, this, you know, if this had come up, it would have been a completely different, um, a completely different situation. The ground was fertile, but nothing was growing on it um, because the, we were trying to harvest things too soon. So that would be a different thesis. My initial thesis stays the same here because we have a seed growing in something fertile. Um, so now if I were to try to go and, and find evidence here, it would be very different evidence. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you know what I mean? The seed is now being harvested before it's ready because we are stuck in this, like, need to, like, give ourselves over to something that feels good, whether or not it's good for us. Um, experience is now replaced with confusion and an inability to make a choice. Um, and where we were talking about like fiery completion. Now we have like, um, our life being interrupted, um, because where our introspection is forcing us to like cut through what has been stable in our lives. You know, I'm just doing that really quickly, but, um, that, that doesn't support my initial thesis, uh, in the same way. Um, yes, the ground is fertile, but right out of the gate, it's like nothing's going to grow there. Um, and instead of experience, you know, I'm resting on indecision. So that would be that now I would have to refact, reformulate my thesis, um, which, you know, would essentially be, yes, the, the potential is there, but the ground isn't, you know, the ground may be fertile, but the temptation to harvest too soon is we're going to keep going in previous path, you know what I mean? So I could go down, but you see how that changes things. Um, and I would have to, um, re-explore or restate or refine, revise what I thought the reading was about. So, um, at any rate, uh, I will stop talking now here in just about 40 minutes. Um, I hope my little ramble here on these two topics was interesting. Um, you know, remember what's good about your pickles. Um, and, uh, enjoy this idea of, um, looking for evidence to support your readings. Um, and be good.